Hey everyone, thanks for coming back to our Getting Started series with PDQ Connect. We are taking a look at episode six today and we are covering our custom packages inside of PDQ Connect. So we've kind of looked at like the package library, we've looked at like automations and stuff like that. But now it's time to actually dive in and look, if take a look at what it looks like to build a custom package inside of PDQ Connect. So let's dive into the, the product here and we will click on our packages tab here. You see we've got a whole bunch of packages. Again, I've said this in a couple of the videos now, but if you ever need to search for packages, you can totally do that here in the search field. We can pull up Chrome. Uh, we can also type in things like PDQ because it's gonna, it's gonna search all of these fields. So if you wanted to search for like custom uh, or packages that were built by PDQ, you can type in PDQ here and it'll pull it up over here on the right side. You'll see that we do got this one custom package here, but that's because PDQ is actually in the package name. There's some uh, quick ways to find whatever software, whatever package you're looking for, that's how to find it. Let's go ahead and dive into create a package. So this first screen, this is gonna be your package name, your version, your description, uh, also your timeout settings. It's really like your, your documentation for the package, so all your coworkers are, you know, know what the package does. And we're all really good at documenting things, right? If we go in here, we'll do just a getting started package. We'll say it's version one. And I love documentation. Okay, the timeout. Now this is going to be, you know, if the pack, a package deploys for so long and it's not going through, this is your timeout settings. Maybe it's hung up. Maybe there's an issue but you can extend that, you can increase the amount, you can limit the amount. Usually five minutes is a good starting point. If you do have something that is a larger install, you might want to think about extending that time frame. All right, so now we're gonna go look at the actual install options. These are the meat and potatoes of custom packages. Okay, so this first one, it's already selected here for us, add install step. So if we click that option, this is gonna add an install step to the package. You'll see it pulls it up right over here. Here's our step. Step name is install. You could go through and modify that if you want to. Installer, this is where you're going to click and attach your installation file. I don't have one here right here, but this is where you would click and select an MSI file, an EXE file, an MSP file, whatever you want. Uh, attachments, now this isn't your installer. This is additional files that you might need for your installation to succeed. So that's where you would upload files. You could upload an entire folder. Uh, any additional files for you that you need for that installation. Parameters, now this one's really important, uh, especially, especially if you're working with like an EXE file. An EXE file, you're gonna need some kind of parameter, silent parameter, so that the installation occurs silently without prompting the user uh, or erroring out. So this is where you're gonna wanna put your, your silence, your slash Qs, your slash QNs, uh, slash very silent, whatever the parameter is for your EXE file, that's where you're gonna wanna put it. If you have an MSI file, as soon as you attach that MSI file, it's just going to populate the parameters field with all the necessary information because MSI files are standardized. And so you don't even have to worry about it. You select the MSI file, it, go ahead, it, it goes ahead and fills in all the parameters you need. Okay, It'll show you an example of the command line code that's actually going to install the actual package for you. Success codes, if there are specific success, success, success codes, that is a very dangerous word, uh, anyways, if there are specific codes or return codes, uh, that's easier to say, that you need to include with your package, you can add those there. And then you can choose to run it as the local system uh, account. And that, I would definitely recommend starting with that account if you don't know which one to pick. Uh, like 95 to even like 99% of the time, you're going to want to run your installation as the local system. You can also run it as a logged in user. There are certain packages that we've had to uh, select the logged on user to actually get the package to run through and install correctly. So definitely take a look at that. Start with local system, then try logged on user if that doesn't work. Error mode, this is where you can set your different error modes. So let's dive into the next step here. We hit the drop down next. Instead of clicking add install step, we're going to hit the drop down. Here you're going to see the actual different steps that we have available to us in PDQ Connect. So we have our install step, which we already covered. We also have our script step, file copy step, reboot step, and our nested step. So let's dive into the script step real quick. Now you'll notice that there's gonna be some similarities between the pages, so I won't spend too much time on them, uh, like attachments, like the additional files, folders, things like that, parameters, success codes, running as, 
all that stuff you're going to find pretty much in most of these different uh, step options. So anyway, so this is the script step. Now this will let you choose between a PowerShell script or we can change this to a CMD script. So uh, you can add your, bat your batch files, your PS1 files, or you can add in your uh, script right here, your code for your uh, deployment. So if I wanted to, I could just add a dirt right here, or I could change this to PowerShell and get dash process. Uh, so you can add your script there. Uh, you can add your files, your parameters, success code, so on and so forth. And then you would save that. You can deploy that out. And it's also important to point out that you can see on here on the left side that now I've got a second step. So again, this isn't like, hey, you just pick your one in step for in, your one installation step for the package. You can have multiple steps for these packages. So as I'm going through, I'm just going to add one after the next. So that's our script step. Next, let's take a look at the file copy step. Uh, this is basically just a, I mean, it's pretty easy to understand. This is a simple file copy if you need. This is great for if you need like files on a target device before you run an installation or something like that. Or if you just want to copy files in general, you can do that here. You can upload your files, you can upload your folder, and then you can set your target folder here for the destination. Uh, next, we have our, that's going to yell at me because I didn't add a target folder. Next, we have our reboot step. This one is pretty simple. Uh, you need to reboot someone's computer, shoot a reboot step out to them. So this one, you, uh, the nice thing is you can come in here, you can be nice and you can delay this. Maybe you want to add like 30 second delay to it. So if they're working on some important files or something, they could have a chance to save them. Or you could be mean and add like a five second one and watch them panic. Uh, the message, hey, I'm shutting down your PC. You can say, yeah, I communicated it five seconds before I did it. All right, last but not least is the nested uh, package step. Now this one's really cool because you think that it's like, oh, hey, I, you know, I have a package and I'm deploying one software with that package. But instead you could do a nested package where you deploy lots of software with just one package. So we could come in here and what you do is you're gonna actually search the packages contained uh, in PDQ Connect. And this is gonna, gonna be your custom package as well as the PDQ uh, supported packages. So I could come in here and add Chrome to this. Now that's actually going to attach the entire Chrome package to this. So it's going to run through all these steps and then it's going to deploy this uh, package by itself. And we could add another one here. I could do Firefox. And let's just get all the browsers. Could do another one and add Opera. So this is, this is a really cool option for say like you have uh, new hires, things like that, you're onboarding, you need to deploy out, you know, software to a new computer that's getting set up. You could have one package that has all these nested packages inside of it and just fire them off with one package, okay? One package and all of a sudden all of these uh, browsers are deployed. So you're good to go there. Okay, so that's that pretty much covers it for all the custom packages and all the different installation steps and options you can choose there. But I did wanna show you one more thing. So if I cancel out of that, Okay, we're back here at our packages page. Now something cool that has recently been added is we could come in here. And so this is a PDQ package. These are the different versions. So if I dive into a PDQ created package, it's not actually gonna let me like dive right into the package. It's gonna show me the different versions. To actually get to the package, you're gonna click on one of the versions. And here you can see all the different steps uh, included with this one package. But you'll notice if I come in here and I try to mess with anything, I can't even click on that. If I, I can't delete anything there. If I go to these, this uh, command right here, I can select it. I can't delete it. I can't do anything to it. So this, this package, because it's uh, created and maintained by PDQ, it's locked down. But what you can do is you can come up here to these three dots and hit duplicate package. So when you duplicate a package, you'll see it says 7-zip, 3-created. That's probably because I've practiced this before. So we'll go to packages, and sure enough, there you see it, 7-zip with 3 in the parentheses. And when I dive into this package now, you'll see that I can edit everything, make it 7-zip Brock style, the version number. All this stuff is now editable because now it's a custom package. And in fact, if we go out cancel those changes, you'll see that the source no longer says PDQ, it says custom. Uh, the other cool thing is that if I 
went into one of our already created custom packages like Coda here. You know, it's just got one install step to it, pretty simple. But if I come in here, I have the same duplicate duplicate package option. So say you're going through and you've got a bunch of packages to create and they're all very similar with just like slight variations. You could come in here, click on the one package, duplicate it a bunch of times, just make the small modifications that you need and you're good to go. Or like I said, duplicate one of our packages, have all that information, all the documentation already there for you, all the installation steps, the installers, things like that, and you're good to go. Really cool option there. Glad that they added that. That one's going to save a lot of people a lot of time, especially if you're dealing with a lot of packages that you're creating and modifying. Thanks for hanging out, everyone. Uh, if you want more PDQ content, make sure to like and subscribe. If you've got any questions for us, hit us up down in the comments down below, or hang out with us over on our Discord server. We are there all the time. And uh, for PDQ, I'm Brock. Thanks for watching.